So we might um, begin to get started. Um, I just want to begin by welcoming everybody to our second annual Clonic Hill Tea Lecture. Um, this is a lecture that, as I am in Super Value Support every year, um, to, to mark the success of Clonic Hill Tea in being recognised as Ireland's first autism-friendly town, and now set, setting an example to communities across Ireland and indeed beyond who are trying to follow the example of Clonic Hill Tea in becoming an autism-friendly community. I think this year has been immensely challenging for everybody and we're hugely appreciative of people, particularly during midterm, uh, taking the time to be with us this evening and to have this conversation. Because I think it's really easy at the moment for us to drop the ball on certain issues. Uh, we're also focused on COVID-19. We're all a little bit on edge. But I think what we all know as well is that actually more than ever, we need to be inclusive. More than ever, more than ever we need to be mindful of the different needs and the different strengths and the different challenges people within our community experience. And tonight we want to look at that, not just from a challenges point of view, but also as we enter into a new normal, what are the opportunities? What are the learnings the autism community can provide to the broader community? So we're in for a very uh, interesting evening and I really appreciate uh, our special guest here this evening, uh, Jennifer Cook, uh, formerly Jennifer Cook O'Toole, who's going to be delivering our Clonic Guilty Lecture. Um, what I wanted to say at the outset is, as I am, is so appreciative of the support of Super Value nationally around the country and the work we do in promoting autism friendly shopping and autism friendly communities. But we're also very conscious that this work very much started in the town of Clonakilty itself, um, where Scally Super Value became the first supermarket in the country uh, to offer autism friendly shopping, something that is gradually becoming a norm here in Ireland and something that I think, you know, we're really proud and appreciative of the work the Scali family has done, and now they're supported by a fantastic committed group of autism advocates and local community activists uh, on the Autism Friendly Town Committee. So before we get started, I just want to introduce Katrina Scali, who's going to say a few words on behalf of the Autism Friendly Town Committee. Thank you, Adam. And firstly, um, I would like to thank you, Adam, and as I am for your ongoing guidance and support to us in Clannacilty. We're, and uh, we're so fortunate to have your support. And also we're very fortunate too to have the continued backing of SuperValue. Uh, welcome, Jennifer. Delighted to meet you this evening on webinar, even if it's, <laughs> even if it's yeah. over the waves. And um, looking forward to hearing your tips and tools that you are going to share with us, for, uh, with everybody navigating the challenges of COVID in our communities. And to the people of Clannacilty this evening, I want to say a huge thank you for getting behind this initiative two years ago. And um, everybody in the town across the whole community worked so hard to make Ireland, to make Clannacilty our first autism friendly town. Now, two years later, um, who would have known 2020 would have been such a difficult year for everybody? But indeed, we are looking forward to 2021 for better things ahead, and we'll all face the challenges together. Um, now, what is unique in our Autism Friendly Initiative is that um, it's making everybody in our community aware of what we all can do to make Clannacilty a better place to, for, for everybody to work in and to play in and to live in and even to visit. And thus our committee is composed of people from all across the community to make it, to help that inclusivity. Um, we're very lucky indeed uh, to have Elaine McGoldrick, who is our artistic voice. Uh, we have the sports organizations represented. We have Ger McCarthy and Stephen Pete from the GA. We have Owen Hurley from the rugby club. We are very lucky to have Catherine O'Connor from Tidy Towns which is um, a great organization in the town too. From our school body, we have Padraig O'Hearn, who's the principal of our Grail School. And from the retail and business, we have Owen Scally and myself, Katrina, his mom from Scally Supervalue. And we have Julie Durrell from Supervalue and Mosgraves. And I want to thank most sincerely everybody on the committee for their dedication and commitment and, and I, I have no doubt but that that is going to con continue and for the years ahead and we look forward, we have great plans and um, we look forward to year three of our, um, of our continued work. 
So um, looking forward to you to hearing more from you, Jennifer, and I'll hand you back now to Adam. Thank you. Thank you, Katrina, uh, for that lovely introduction. Um, and one of the things I just wanted to do was just give people a sense of, of how the evening's proceedings will work. Uh, people might be aware there's a Q&A box, uh, which you will see um, on your Zoom interface. And if you have any questions at any stage during the course of the lecture, it could be about the, the content that Jennifer's addressing, or maybe it's about how you can get involved in the Autism Friendly Town Initiative in Clonakilty, how you can support this work pop it in our Q&A box. And at the end of the presentation, we're gonna leave a few minutes to address any questions you might have. And Jennifer is gonna be assisted by Elaine McGoldrick, um, who's our autism representative on the Connacilty Autism Friendly Towns Committee, Julie representing SuperValue and Katrina representing uh, Scally's uh, here in Clonakilty. So we'll have you well covered for questions. So don't be shy and feel free to ask any and we will come to them at the end. But without further ado, I'm delighted to introduce our special guest this evening, who's going to address the topic of navigating COVID-19 in an autism friendly way. And just to introduce Jennifer, Jennifer Cook was identified as being on the spectrum in 2011, just after her three children. She's now the author of seven best-selling books, The Asper, Asper Kids Collection, Sisterhood of the Spectrum and Autism and Heels, which include a Wall Street Journal bestseller, a Publishers Weekly Best Book title winner, and three of Book Authority's best-selling and top autism books of all time. Jennifer is the best-selling female author of any single book in the genre, a multi-award winning international speaker, and the founder of Belong, a virtual university of enrichment and community empowering neurodiverse individuals, couples, and families worldwide. And Jennifer is no stranger to Quark. This isn't her fourth Quark-based event, although this time a little bit further from Quark than uh, I'm sure we'd love to have her this evening. Um, and without further ado, I'm delighted to introduce Jennifer. Hi, everyone. Yes, this is, it is lovely to talk to everybody, but I must say, I would absolutely rather be there in person. <laughs> it would be so wonderful. I have to say that every time um, I have been to Quark, I have been so impressed with, um, with the genuine kindness and goodness of the folks that I meet there. I just, the levels of curiosity, uh, I suppose that's what happens when you have an area that's focused on learning so very much in general. And um, I feel it. And I, I, I feel like Cork is starting to become a second home over there, which is, which is beyond wonderful. So I'm gonna start, if I may, besides saying thank you, for having me there. And I always do genuinely mean that, I do. Um, I want to give a little extra kudos um, to the Skelly family, to Super Value. Um, and I'm gonna do this in a very sincere, non-buttery up sort of way. Um, when I grew up, I grew up in a very small town. Uh, there were 10,000 <laughs> people in the entire town, 150 kids uh, graduating with me um from uh upper school and on that town or in that town we had nine um council members town council members so we had the mayor and then the nine council members and of that group there was one woman and that was my mother and for 12 years she was the only woman and i got to watch her in fact my very first election in which i was able to vote I was able to vote for my mom, which I just think is pretty dang cool. Um, but what I learned from her, she actually personally uh, engineered a, an activity um, or an endeavor, really, um, to create a beautiful center of town bandstand and long running um, summer series, which would bring people into the town, not tax the uh, business owners, not tax the residents, get commercial involvement, get municipal involvement. It is a lot of work. That is what I am saying. I have seen it. And because of that, because I've seen the heart, the dedication, the vision, um, I always say there's a, it's a combination of intention and legacy. And what you are looking to put forth in a lasting way. Because when you begin an endeavor like you all did just two years ago, you've already taken a step. You know, I'm hearing you say the first in Ireland, I will tell you right now, 
Um, I am privileged to work with an amazing woman, uh, Dr. Wendy Ross, she's a CNN hero and she has done amazing things for creating autism friendly experiences in the United States. I have never heard ever anywhere in the world of an all autism friendly town. You all are literally the first, at least to my knowledge, but you are breaking barriers and I want you to know how much I respect that. Um, I'm grateful for this in particular. Adam mentioned, you know, about beyond the spectrum in general. So I like to say that before and after everything else, we are all on the human spectrum. And that is why absolutely everything that I will share with you today, absolutely everything, perhaps certain elements are more, um, necessary for folks on the autism spectrum, or I like to just say now neurodivergent. Um, guess what though? They will only ever improve the personal communication skills um, within a family, within a household. The municipal um, dialogue between commerce and um, obviously in chronic guilty, we're also talking about um, you know, bringing in tourism, and that's certainly, I'm sure, been affected during during this year. Um, but you're talking also about within retail. I think it's so essential. I did a, a talk um, last year uh, for a company called Cargill. It's one of the four largest private com privately held companies in the United States, talking about how businesses themselves can benefit. So they are doing benefit. And as it should be, while this may not be the intent, it's not looking to be self-serving, right? So in this, I'm encouraging other businesses to follow suit, to take a look at what Super Value is doing, because this is big, this is big, because you will also improve the functioning of your own business. You will absolutely, absolutely see that in revenue, in uh, reputation, um, in response and responsibility that the um, area will feel towards you. And so I just want, again, without sounding like I'm going on and on forever with the kudos, it's true, it's true. And so as we take this conversation forward, what I really wanna do is emphasize again, I don't, you will not hear me talk about high and level, uh, high functioning, low functioning. Um, I am very uncomfortable with that. And I'll tell you why. Um, there was a, a panel I was on once, um, it was an international advocacy, uh, self-advocates panel. And there was a gentleman next to me who had an iPad that he used for communication. And I am sitting next to him about as shitty chatty as one can possibly be. And they asked me first, I had the mic first, what is the hardest part of being on the spectrum? And I said, for me, that universally it was feeling constantly and consistently so smart, but so stupid. And um, I'm seeing Elaine nod as well, by the way, I'm not sure that everybody can see, but I'm seeing, and that is the saddest part of the experience. Intelligence, gifts, we all have them. We all come with a certain recipe of wonderfulness. And the thing is that for those of us who are more neurodiverse, our wonderfulness looks a little bit different. And our brains, shall we say, spend their energy a little bit differently. Doesn't mean there's not more. And it doesn't mean there is less. But everyone on that panel did exactly what Elaine did just then, is that nod. And you could hear the voices <clears throat> Well, next to me, this gentleman, I, he uh, wanted the, the mic next. And I will say also, he was in a wheelchair. Um, he presented in a way that most people would think of as quote unquote, low functioning, more clinically, obviously autistic, right? And through his iPad made it very clear that for him, the hardest thing was, and it really, it's not that different, but that every day without fail, he had to convince people and explain to people that he was not cognitively impaired. He simply couldn't access the words that he wanted to share. But in fact, his actual verbal IQ 
it was well beyond the genius range. You just couldn't get the words out. And I wonder if there's not anyone else who has at some point stumbled when you know that you know what you're trying to say, but they just won't come out. That's a universal experience. There are challenges every which way you look. You can be re remarkably eloquent and yet not be able to explain what's gone wrong in a situation that looks super easy to everybody else. You can be remarkably eloquent and simply not able be able to access. These are really universal experiences in many different ways. And so you'll hear me, and I, I always put these two things at the beginning because I will not use high or low functioning. I say more and less obviously challenged. Um, and then the other thing you'll hear is that I know a lot of people, and I know this has been a topic in Cork in particular um, with language, talking about whether it's person first language, what, so that's whether you're saying people with autism, people living with autism, um, people who are neurodiverse instead of neurodiverse people or autistic people, or, I'm gonna, this is always my, I understand that for some people, it matters very, very much. So to those people, if I'm speaking one-on-one -on -one and I know something matters, well, then I'm going to try my very darndest to be respectful and use a language, use words that won't, you know, bother them. And at the same time, I always request the same respect when I say, whatever you call me, as long as it's nice, I won't mind. Because I think too often in the world right now, we are so concerned with, not offending, not misstepping, that we lose the opportunity to be genuinely curious, to be genuine, to feel genuinely safe, uh, to say, I don't get it, or I'm not sure that I really think that. Why we need that in life, or nothing happens. That's emotional security. And you'll see me talking just a little bit, but all human beings, the way we function is that we observe something we think something about what we've observed, we have an emotional reaction to those thoughts, and then we do something based on that emotion. It happens super fast, but that is true for everyone. Why do I know it? Because I'm autistic and I had to learn. I had to study this just as if I were studying um, the, uh, well, uh, <laughs> the book that I wrote that I thought that nobody would ever want to read, which is the secret book of social rules. The thing ends up uh, winning book of the year and becoming the best selling book in the genre. Why? Because it turns out everybody wants to know, everybody wants to know how to get along better with other people, whether that's in business, in their marriage, with their children, with their children's teacher, with their teachers, it doesn't matter. So, my respect is, again, whatever you call me, I will not mind. So folks, when you are writing your questions, please don't get tripped up. I will not be offended unless you just say you're not a nice person. And I'll just say that's not true. And that is all that. <laughs> okay. So long, but I think worthwhile introduction. COVID is terrible. There is no way that I am here to put a sunshiny buff on COVID. When Adam heard me give a talk, um, I think it was in May, uh, did a webinar and surprisingly we had 10,000 views eventually of this webinar. And the entire webinar was about finding ways to learn from the autistic experience to then improve relationships and use it to um, help our mental and sometimes physical, fiscal as well, survival of what is unprecedented in modern history. And I have this buzz phrase, I always say that I believe in relentless positivity and that does not, and this is where it's important, relentless positivity does not mean being a goody two shoes who who puts a shine on everything and says that every day is, you know, perfection. I have to keep it real. I give compliments when I meet, when I see them, when I mean them, because we have to be able to trust that. And by the same token, I will tell you when things are hard and when they are real and when they are scary. So that when I tell you, there are things that right now, every business owner who is listening, every municipal um, employee or official who is listening, every parent, every sibling, every family member, every educator and or therapist or 
person who is or considers that they may be on the spectrum, which is an ever increasing crowd because, you know, caveat here, but it's, it's true that most adults had no, unless they were really classically, if they were verbally challenged as little ones would have no idea, no idea. So pretty much anybody over the age of 30, especially women, no way, you just didn't know. And of course I turned 30 yesterday, but still. Okay, so that all being said, if, if we know that COVID is terrible, people are dying, there doesn't seem to be a, um, an end in sight, let's be honest, and I know you all are back at level five, things are going awfully over here. My birthday was this past weekend and I, I cried because it ended up being a day in which the United States had had the most uh, new diagnoses. What do we do with all that? What the heck is gonna come out of autism that's positive? Well, what I'd like to offer you is a tip here and a tip there, a perspective here and there that I truly think may be unique to you, but only in that you haven't realized it yet. Because I think in the end, these are the things that will help us to move beyond and survive, not just survive, but thrive. Okay, I am breaking this down into two primary sections, folks. Number one, close proximity. We all love our family. We all families, we love the people who are, you know, we the chosen families that we've built for ourselves. Um, there are people in our lives who matter deeply to us. And it becomes a different experience when everyone's in the same place for an extended period of time. Let's just admit it, right? Suddenly the bathroom counter has become a war zone. Suddenly it's those little moments and those little places of those little tete-a-tetes that become power struggles. Okay, here's what they don't have to be. So we're going to talk about living in close, living and working in close quarters. And I keep saying working because this isn't going to be forever, but also let's be honest, um, when you're talking about a town like Clonakilty or any other town with any other business, you have to be able to get along with your coworkers, with your supervisors, with um, truthfully, everybody. So, okay, if first part is close quarters and that also simply means you are kept together if it's a business, situation. We're going to talk about close quarters, how to navigate that, and how actually to even elevate yourself beyond. So that coming out, so that navigating first, I suppose, the fears that are understandable that come along with the unexpected, that you are more empowered now and later to make better personal and professional decisions that probably if you didn't have to stop now, you never would. And the second section that we're going to talk about, um, and so I call grounders, that's what, we're, what I'm going to teach you during that section. The second is we're going to talk about communication. And I promise this will not be a, I feel and you feel, although those are good things to learn. That's not what we're talking about. We're going to be talking about show and tell, evil twins, and triple filters. Don't know what I mean, and that's all part of the fun. So, okay. I'm going to see if we can get our little screen share to work correctly. This is always my hosty disabled attendee screen sharing. Okay, um, so as I am folks, if you're able to change that because it's saying that I cannot show my screen and that would be a bummer. So I will kind of just go on until I hear from from as a fix now, yay, good job. I knew that you would. There we go, share screen. Okay, here I am. Okay, share, but bam. Okay, we're gonna close this little hello Zoom. You don't need to be here, but thank you so much. Let's make you nice and there we go. Okay, look at I got it, I got it, I got it. This is so exciting. Okay, technology, yay. So I'm sure that this is what everyone's family life looks like right now, right? Everybody, this is it. This is your beautiful, wonderful, perfectly, perfect domestic bliss. <laughs> that is everyone, what everyone's experiencing at home. Not at least in my house, I don't think so. And that's okay. 
And that's the first thing that I think we all have to give ourselves is the moment to say, everybody is here and it's okay. You don't have to have it together all the time. You really don't. But you can have it more together than you think you can. And so I'm going to first teach some what I call tools. Okay, so we're going to start there, and you'll see that I'm going to go back and forth between the sharing and the not sharing because I, I do pause here. Will I get go back? Will I get to? I want to be able to go back and forth to all of you. So no, sorry guys, but this is this is when it makes me unhappy when when I don't get to go back and forth and I want to go talk to you. Okay, well, I'm going to have to talk to you with this on. And that's a bummer. All right, so grounders. This is what we're gonna be talking about is your a brain house, right? What I want you to imagine is, um, and this is where I would love to show you, I'm gonna ask everybody to do it if you possibly can, is I would like you to make your hands right, um, into a fist, okay? And hold it up in the air. This is just for you. Elaine just punched somebody, don't do that. Okay, hold it up and there we go. Um, Adam, I can, is there a way that I can pop between just, I just want to know so I could show, so I can be on, like if I do, is there a way for me to do that so I can come, pop back on and just see me? Uh, Brendan might be able to advise you now. <clears throat> okay, well, until he says so, I will just keep talking. So you got your hand up and Adam, if they can see you, you have it perfectly. Um, I don't know that they can, but everyone's got it. Okay. They can see you. They can see me? Oh, as well as my screen? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay, then. Yay. All right. So you got it. Great. All right. Let's pretend, and this is actually a pretty good um, model of the human brain, right? So the reptilian brain, this is literally reptilian. Yes. So we're having neurology when you thought you were just chit-chatting about, you know, chronic guilty. But yes, you're having neurology. Okay. Your reptilian brain is the downstairs. Now, it's literally called that because it is that ancient all right and upstairs we're going to call this upstairs the upstairs brain that's your higher order thinking so we're going to build and imagine your own little brain house okay who's downstairs in this i like to envision if i possibly can my favorite book characters and pop culture characters movie characters okay so who's downstairs the feelers the alarmists the warriors the survivalists the watchdogs, the lookouts, the fighters. I always think about this in the terms of like, if you've ever seen Toy Story, the Pixar movies, that that the um, you know the lookouts are the little green army men running around. Um, the feeler might be uh, Eeyore from um, Winnie the Pooh, who's always down here, you know, um, or um, the warrior is like the little guy from the little uh, rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. We're late for we're late we're late for a very important date. Pop 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 pop. Right? Okay. This is your fight, flight, freeze response. All of us, certainly, we will respond to clear and obvious threats in life. But most of the threats that we experience are what we call little T traumas. There are those moments where something in your mind, you know that you've just heard a voice that's not your own. You've felt something, you're reacting more viscerally than you might. Okay, if, um, if that experience weren't in your, in your past. So we react, all of us, all of us. Sometimes you'll see people on the spectrum and folks think um, we're, you know, um, overreacting. I always thought that was a ridiculous thing because nobody knows what's happening inside. So please don't judge me by you or I, because I shouldn't be judging you by me. You're not underreacting, it's simply you. Okay. Well, here's what happens when, and this is when you go back to your hand, everybody. Okay, ready? When, so hold your hands up. If you hit one of those situations, what happens is you literally, you literally flip your lid. Okay? You are stuck down here in your lower order non-thinking, right? This is the ah or the open or the freeze. Yeah? Okay. Up here is where you need to be to get anything done, whether that is write a report, integrate feedback from um, customers or from a teacher or from a spouse. It's all up here. You can't get there. Think of it as, as there's been a collapse 
the door is shut. You are stuck downstairs once you have flipped your lid. Because who lives upstairs up there? Those are your thinkers. Those are your problem solvers, your communicators, your planners, your organizers, your creatives. These are your listeners, your balances, balancers, your team players. These are the folks that, you know, my kids say, this is where you see um, the Avengers. They're up there, all the Avengers. For me, this is where um, I see Anne of Green Gables. She's thinking and she's problem solving as best as she possibly can. She's imagining beautiful, wonderful things. Um, if you, you know, basically any interest that is yours, you can think of characters, um, Yoda, if you're into Star Wars, whatever it is, there's somebody there. This is what we all need to be able to do, to lead, to follow, to role model, to listen. We have to be able to do these things, but guess what? We can't once our lid is flipped. So how do we get back down to where we need to be so that we can get rid of this guy and calm ourselves down? This is the most, I'm gonna tell you right here again, it's your grounders. It's your mental pause button, all right? This is what you want to be integrating it. And this takes practice, but into your everyday life. This is essential at home. As we are navigating times that are absolutely uncertain, as we ourselves don't know what's coming next. We don't know what's coming next, perhaps at our job. We don't know what's coming next um, with the actual, you know, with everyone's actual health. We don't know what's coming next within our own homes. It has been an awful truth, but during this time, we've also seen great rises in domestic violence and child abuse. And honestly, that's not too surprising. You put everyone in a perfect storm of fear. And what we're all doing is flipping our lids, okay? And if anyone's ever had a boss at work who reacts really strongly or, or someone who you are in fact um, supervising and they're not seeming to hear you, well, a good possibility is that they can't because something is triggering them. So what do we do? Our ground nurse. So the first one I'm gonna ask everybody to do too. This is, this is actually one of my absolute favorites. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to ask everyone to look around. So I want you to kind of first just help me because I want to show you something not to do. Ready? So everyone, I'm going to ask, I'm going to invite you to do this. I'm going to do it with you. Nobody's watching you. So just go ahead. You're going to close your eyes. And for just one moment, I want you to envision a moment in your life where you felt that bottom fallout from the pit of your stomach. Maybe it was, you know, you were handed back an exam and you bombed it. Maybe it was someone leaving that broke your heart. Maybe it was you didn't get the promotion. Whatever it was, maybe you were in a car accident. Maybe you got a COVID diagnosis. Okay, try as much as you can to inhabit that moment. When I speak, you can open your eyes, ready? Stop it already. Stop overreacting. Stop being so emotional. We can't get anything done this way. Nobody really cares. It is too much. This is inappropriate, unprofessional. This is not acceptable in this environment. Does anyone feel better? Anybody? Of course not. But that's what we hear. That's what we on the spectrum hear very often but I can promise you we're not the only ones. It does take a moment to realize though, how incredibly ineffective that is. If we're in, a corp in corporate leadership and municipal leadership, if we're a parent, it doesn't matter. Certainly as a spouse or a partner, but here's something that does, ready? You may feel right now that you get a little rushed from that. And I don't mean the good kind. Here's what I want you to do. It's called five, four, three, two, one. This is one of the most powerful things you can do in real time. If you are in your home, if you are in your office and you can feel someone has gotten you upset, something that happened and you observed it and you had a thought about it and the feeling is angst or just not good, okay? Whatever the case may be, you're in that spot. 
you have to be the smart one. You have to, and this takes practice to recognize what your body does when this happens, because nothing good, nothing good is going to happen until you get back down to here. And some people do that. I need to take a minute. I need to walk away. Fine. You may do that. You can say so, but then you have to come back. That's what people don't do. That's not cool. <laughs> All right, so five, four, three, two, one. I would like everyone to look around him or herself. And I would like you, you can say it quietly under your breath because saying it out loud makes you do it slowly, which counts. Five things that you see. I'll give you examples as I go. I see my coffee cup in front of me. I see the reflection of my computer monitor in the mirror that is my desk. I see raindrops on the roses outside the window. I see a big old circle light glaring in my face. I see a bird that just flew from one tree to another. I'm gonna give you a minute. Really do it. Okay, next, four things that you hear. I have to get kind of quiet here. So I can hear the cool air coming up through the vents. I can hear the vent itself rattling a little bit. I can hear the sound of my voice. And I can hear paper crumble a little bit under my hand. Three things now that you feel, and that can be feel as in the pressure, like I can feel my weight on my sit bones underneath me, or it can be also that I feel the denim of my jeans. And I feel the hardness of the edge of my desk against my wrist bone. Two things that we smell. You really have to focus on this. I can smell the coffee that's over there. I can smell a candle, it's on the other side of the room. And finally, one thing that you taste. For me, it's the coffee again, a little stale now, but I can taste it. it might be your toothpaste, but if you really focus, you'll be able to. If you notice even about me, and this will be true of everyone here, your body, just got completely present. I would love to tell you I'm the kind of person who can do deep mindfulness exercises and can meditate and all those things that I know are great for me, but I can't. It's just not gonna happen, folks. I just can't, my brain goes too fast. But doing something like this means that right now, what has happened is this. So no matter what I'm upset about, I'm back here. I'm in a place now where I can think and problem solve, or I can listen. This is some of the stuff that's integral to teach in business. It's integral to teach and um, preach and teach to you, your whole family, your kids as we're going through this, your employees, whatever the case may be. Um, certainly if you are in healthcare, one of the things, and I'll, I'll give Adam a link to this, the, uh, if you have to take someone to the hospital, unfortunately with COVID, you know, frequently you're asked uh, how bad is the pain or how are, you know, five, and they'll have a little facial scale, one to five, one to 10. I absolutely cannot use that because of something we're gonna get to later called mind blindness. And I actually come up with a different way to get there, but there are ways we've got to get We've got to improve the way we react in small, dense situations, dense, tense situations so that we can do better by everybody, okay? So to me, that's my favorite. The next one is this, okay? And it's realizing, and this is once you've gotten to that place where you can be thinking and problem solving, all right, well, here you go, this is it. We often hear that change takes place just outside your comfort zone. I would imagine, and I could be wrong, but in chronic guilty, no, nope, chronic guilty, I got it, okay. It, um, when you mention the word autism and when you were bringing together the first of the ideas for the programs, 
Frequently, I'll get the response, oh, but you don't seem autistic. At which time I often think, and here is evidence that the speed of light is faster than the speed of sound because you look so very intelligent until you spoke. But, <laughs> but no, in all honesty, that's again, one of those moments where I would rather have somebody say something and be, and, and be honest. And that's when I say, well, what does a woman look like or a man? there's no such thing. But I understand usually what they're talking about is obvious reactivity. Trust me, it's there. We just learned to script really well. And one of the things that challenges all of us is this, the comfort zone, learning zone, panic zone. It is wrong to say that for all of us, growth occurs just outside of our comfort zone. Um, we're just beyond the comfort zone because mention autism to any town, any new town looking to do this. And I think there will be, there will be resistance at first or there may be because what does that, that word seems familiar, perhaps it carries with it connotations, denotations that, that are uncomfortable. When we don't know something, when it's unfamiliar, it feels, un, we feel uncomfortable. And when we feel uncomfortable, we try to get away from it usually. So that's why you'll see if the comfort, our comfort zone, right, is where we are so relaxed that we really don't have to think much. That's what you do on a Saturday afternoon. It's what you buy when you go into the, into the super value because you know those are the same, those are your favorite foods that you're going to want to have. Okay. The panic zone is when everything has changed up, you don't know how to find it anymore. You might be running from appointment to appointment. You've lost, you've forgotten how completely to use or can't figure out how to use a program that you need to, or you're heading into the hospital because of a COVID situation. That's panic zone. We don't learn in panic zone. Guess where we are? Back down here. It is this, the learning zone. And once again, what you're doing here is creating that learning zone. And I'm excited when I hear about some of the projects that are going on and are going to be happening there um, because those are learning zone projects. Those are enabling people like Elaine, um, hopefully people like myself to come walk through because for us, a lot of times we can't, right? I'm gonna show you a very, very little fun little, little thing about the way we think, which is right in front of me, okay? People who are neurotypical, this is how you all arrive at ideas. You say, look, here's a tabletop. This represents an idea, okay? This represents mm, an example of it. This represents an example of it. Is there anyone who very logically would say, okay, here's my idea. Like, it's like, you know, those five paragraph essays we used to have to write in school and you'd have to say the main thing and then put all the points afterwards and then say it again. But does anyone actually think that way? Oh, you notice the different examples. And then you, at least for us on the spectrum, we notice examples and we pull together a summary. That is what Sherlock Holmes does, who by the way is based on a, a professor um, that Arthur Conan Doyle absolutely said was, or we can see clearly was on the spectrum. You don't start with the final premise and then try to stick some proof under there. You start off, you see it here, yes, good, with an example. And you start off with another example and hopefully more. And then you say, look at that. That makes sense. If, you, if, if they come together, we see patterns. And that's what I'm doing with you right now is seeing a pattern because I think differently. You giving us the chance to look at and teach you, us and you within our learning zones, once we're calm, that's a beautiful thing. And that's what happens in a municipality, in a family, in a school, in a company. Why? Because you are giving us all this opportunity. It's like playing dominoes. And you know those dominoes run, domino runs? That, what I'm talking about here is I'm talking about playing dominoes backwards, the way you want it to be. If people observe, think, feel, do, okay, if that's how we work, then what we all need to do together after we have decided what is 
the, uh, the something that we want to come out of that learning circle, right? What is the something? What are some of our goals? And always breaking them down into three steps maximum and then another three steps maximum so we don't overwhelm ourselves. I call that candy land. And I have since found out that it's not a game you have over there and I'm brokenhearted because it's one of the best little childhood games ever. But basically it's like, here's a blue square and here's a yellow square. And sometimes you get two blues and you have to hop, right? And the idea being when we have too much thrown at us as people on the spectrum, our panic escalates out of nowhere. I mean, you know, to, to the um, realms of space. Why? Because we get down the street and around the corner before anyone else can. But that's not unique to us either, right? We just do it really fast. But what we also do is that we can show you, and I can only point these things out to you because, because I have had to notice stuff you do, notice stuff you do, and you being neurotypical folks. And because the neurotypical folks are more typical, they're not noticing their own things, right? And but I'm seeing, as do so many people on the spectrum, I'm seeing the patterns and connections that then become true for everyone on the spectrum the human spectrum, that think, feel, do is one of them. So the best way to do this, the best way to use this idea in life, and this would be certainly what we see in industry and municipalities, but it goes to, you can't go so far yet. Um, start with, okay, you're gonna decide, I have to just move you all because my little window is window. There we go. Decide what it is that you want to have happen in the end. Sorry. And that's the, going to be the final observable do, if you will. Um, and I'm trying to move you all again and you don't want to move. So that's okay. Um, then consider what feelings, be they some, some, yours or someone else's, have to make that action possible. We don't think about other people's feelings in that in those terms, because what thoughts are feeling, what thoughts have to happen for those feelings to make sense? And finally, what can we see or hear, observe that can inspire those thoughts, make that happen? In the time of COVID, what are we dealing with? We're dealing with so much unknown, so much unknown, oh dear goodness gracious, that we don't anymore really know what to plan. And that's why I say, take it down, look just ahead, what is it that you want people to feel and experience when you are there? Whether it's your company, your family, in your home, in your school, if you are um, a hairdresser, right? I'll tell you a thing, I put off getting my hair cut all the time. Do you know why? It's not sensory things. Mm -mm, it's not because it gets loud or anything like that. No, it's because even though I'm chitty chatty, the social anxiety of going in and having to chit chat make me take too long. What happens if you don't get your hair cut? It doesn't look well kept. You don't look well kept. And guess what? You show up, you don't keep your job. <laughs> Same ha thing happens if you don't really know what's supposed to be worn, which is why one of the other things to communicate, oh my gosh, so important is in school, they're called rubrics. Here, when I talk about contracts, I'm saying in your family, say, we're going to sign a contract. Be explicit. This is what I expect from you done in the who, what, where, when, how, and this is what I will bring back to you. Within business, be super explicit. One of my lines is just, if you hear yourself thinking, I shouldn't have to tell you, that is your clue that yes, you should, and you should do it now. How should you do it though? <laughs> Triple filter. Now we get into my three favorite um, communication techniques, right? And this is what gets us through this time. And then ever after, the triple filter test. All right, so the first question is, all right, now can I just ask you all, are you seeing your gal the gallery in front of the middle, in the middle of my scene, my screen or no? There. We can see you and we can see a slide that says the triple, fil triple filter test. Yeah, but that's okay. Don't look at that. Everybody close your eyes. Don't look at the triple filter test for a minute. No, 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 no. that's fine. Okay, here we go. Um, so the first thing to question is, is what you're thinking kind? Before you say anything to anyone, ask yourself, is what you are thinking kind? Is what you are thinking kind? And 
necessary or useful. Is what you are thinking kind and necessary or useful and true? In business and in life, I ask you please, especially because it's so easy when you are stuck down here and not able to access here, right? To shoot ourselves in the foot personally, professionally, relationally. When we're getting through the COVID time, these are the times that you can practice these skills. These are the times when you can every day, five, four, three, two, one, when you can do something called butterfly hugs. They're easy. You can also do them on your legs if you're like this on your legs under a table if you're in a meeting. You know what this does? Just this for a minute or two. This hijacks your entire paralympic, parasympathetic limbic system. And I bet you wanted to know that. You know what that means? It means it literally resets your brain. Just going like this for a couple of minutes. These are the things that we can teach to our loved ones, to um, and certainly to our fellow citizens, to our um, industry. This is the stuff that makes for better problem solving, um, better thinking, productivity. Because the truth is, this is the only way that you know that whatever you're going to say is going to have any kind of positive impact. We literally, we on the spectrum literally cannot see or observe where people are coming from. It is called mind blindness. We cannot step into somebody else's perspective naturally. It didn't say won't, I said can't. And this is when it makes it so dang hard. We don't know what we're doing right and we don't know what we're doing wrong. And you would think, especially then, oh, by the way, then you add in our challenges and reading and showing emotions. And I always say that we, we all think we're better at it. That's right, we all, all people, all of us, Think we're better at it than like grandpa who thinks you know he doesn't need a hearing aid so here's what we're going to do because in the end all of this creates a, a tidal wave if you will of well honestly discombobulation and observation it observations being impacted um dismissed emotive it makes so that we cannot give you all that we can and we are all shortchanged for it. Let's see if I can, what happened to my, hmm. There we go. So don't tell me, show me. You've heard probably in story writing, we don't want to be told and this is why. Y'all don't tell as well as you think you do. I'm gonna show you a game. This is something I do around the world, all right? Where I will give two people a bunch of ordinary objects. Yeah, and I'll say one person is not allowed to look, so they have to turn away. And I always do this with neurotypical folks. And then I will say, all right, player one, you have one minute to take all of these items, put them together and make yourself a little sculpture. And then at the end of that minute, you're going to explain to person two, to player two, how to build what you've constructed. Now, this goes the same for you've sent an email. You think you're giving really clear directions and shockingly what you're getting back is not in fact what you're wanting. Or you've told your child to clean their room and they're not getting it. Just like you might tell somebody to do something outside. Did you send a picture? Did you show them? Or did you just tell them? There's so much relying on telling and it's not just we who are on the autism spectrum who struggle with trying to interpret and understand because sometimes the communication into us is not so hot so you can't expect the best back out and um if you think one thing i've said today just any one thing i've said today maybe you go hmm, hmm then that is only because an autistic brain was able to take the information in and think about it and present it back to you so, all right, the directions that the person who put this together gave were, put the straw under the cup. Well, right now you cannot see it, but in fact, there is a hot pink straw under that cup. Okay, then put, this, these are the directions they gave to the other person, then put the block on top of the cup with the pointy angle up. Generally, of course, triangles have two pointy angles, but I, you know, here we go, there's an, there is a triangle on top. 
All right, so now the googly eye goes in front of the block. Here we go. And the mini pumpkin, you want to sit that on the table in front of the cup. Done. And then the little paint tube balances on the stem. Okay, everybody see it? Okay. Player two, put the straw under the cup. It is, the cup is balancing on it. Then put the block on the top with the pointy uh, part up. Pointy part is up. Mm -hmm. Something looks a little different if you notice. All right, so now the googly eye goes in front of it. It is, it's laying on the cup right there. The mini pumpkin, you sit that in front of the cup. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then the little blue paint tube balances on the stem. This is what happens by telling. That's not showing. Just remember those. The next time you give someone directions and think, how can they not be getting this? Similarly, I ask you and invite you never to do a project about autistics, about people who are autistic, about folks who are divergent in any way, shape, or form without including them and in giving us all a chance to show you and simply not tell you. And as we get, I think this is my, uh, my last one. <clears throat> okay, this is the evil twin, or as I like to call it, intent versus perception. This is one of my favorite, 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 um, super fast communication techniques, okay? It's this. You have to establish this first, but you do this in any business. I'm telling you, classroom, you do this in, um, with your, your loved ones, it's perfect. Okay, basically it means, imagine that us talking, that we're talking and it's like um, getting a bad Wi-Fi connection um, and things are a little staticky, all right? Well, sometimes you've, in that situation where you're going, wait, 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 wait a second, you're trying to put something out there that's productive, that's helpful, that's meaningful, but the reaction on the other end, not so hot. Something's going wrong here. There is definitely a bad Wi-Fi connection. What is, and I don't mean a literal Wi-Fi connection. I mean um, that, that what you're saying, the output, the input, the reception, it's not going right. So what do you do? You say evil twin. You simply say the words evil twin. At that moment, both people have to agree to stop. The emotions have to stop because you tell your the thought is there. Okay, instantly, if someone is saying evil twin, it means no, 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 not what I meant, not what I meant. Because if if that were not the case, we would not be having an argument. Everything would be okay. Hold on, can we try again? And then you gently say, could you try to show me what you think I might have been saying so that I can try to compare that with what I was intending to communicate. And that is, let's see if I can get out of it here. All right, that is us. All right, like, can I get us back to over here and get out of show active speaker video? Well, no, that's, how come I can't get a nice big, Adam, Brennan, help me because I'm not able to get a nice big picture. Stop share. Yes, stop share. Remote, yes, please, please do. Please approve. I'm trying to approve, but it's not highlighting the approve section. Ah, approve. Go ahead, turn it off for me. Yes, I'm up. yes, open, move over. Uh, okay, wait, stop share anyway. Got it. Ah. <laughs> I couldn't see my, um, my, my little cursor anymore. Oh goodness, so I have chatted for quite the while. I hope that we are okay with all that. But in, you know, in summary, what I really just wanna say is, again, all of this is for everyone. And if we can keep ourselves in places where we are able to get ourselves back downstairs, uh, back upstairs so that we're using this, all these beautiful brains of ours, and then we can find ways and use these tips to communicate effectively and kindly, I think we're gonna not only weather this awful time, but have discovered that it was a time during which we could improve our creative thinking, our outside the box creativity, and um, really have learned to be better, kinder human beings to one another. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for what I think has been a really enlightening uh, presentation that I think 
everybody, uh, be they neurodivergent or not, uh, will be able to take away and learn from and, and use um, during the, the challenging uh, period that we're all uh, living through. I just remind everybody um, that you can feel free to paste a question in the Q&A box and we will come to them over the next few moments. Um, what I might just do while we're waiting for any initial questions is I might just ask Judy from Super Value um, maybe to just say a few words uh, in response to the lecture. Yes, um, thank you very much, Jennifer. I found it, I was intrigued. Um, I learned a lot, so I personally um, found an awful lot of things that I'd like to use as tools myself. Um, as a neurotypical, we'll say, um, I found them extremely useful. And I think one thing I would take away with, um, whether it's business or home, um, is before speaking, which often um, I don't think uh, enough myself. Um, but being what we have to say, is it kind necessary, useful and true. Um, I think for me it is um, it's a wonderful takeaway um, and it's something I'd like to practice as I said at home and at work, let alone in our autism friendly town initiative in Clannacilty. I think it's something that um, we might use as a mantra ourselves. So thank you for that. I found it really, really insightful. I also found the Another tool that resonated with me was the, the comfort zone, panic zone and learning zone. And I think sometimes, um, whether it's our own teams that work actually, or our own kids, you'd say, go on, get out of your comfort zone, not realizing that it can be a red alert um, and difficult mm -hmm. to absorb the new learning or the new lesson. Um, so thank you. Um, I found them really interesting and I thank you for that myself as well and I'm sure our committee when we get back to get together again we we'll look at how we can use some of these um in, in our autism friendly town initiative so so thank you thank you thank you Judy and I have I have some questions starting to come in but I just want to see Elaine on behalf of the autism community in Clannacilty um is there anything you'd like to share at this point in response to the lecture uh, yeah, I, I, I was a bit like a nodding dog through all of this because so much of what Jennifer was saying was resonating. So just thank you. Thank you for representing us so well. And um, the visuals really, really do help, you know. So thank you for that. It's, that's about as much as I can say. Absolutely. <laughs> because we, we've had a couple of questions in, uh, some, some kind comments, and also the people are wondering, can they get access to the slides? And... With Jennifer's permission, we do have everyone who's here's email address and we'll is issue them to everybody um, in the coming days, uh, if that's okay, Jennifer. Absolutely, and um, what they can also do, so uh, those slides actually are all part of the Belong program, which you mentioned in the beginning. Um, so there is a waitlist program for that. Now um, we will, um, you'll have the link for that. You can give that to folks and as well as there's a free um, uh, video download on the site on my site that, um, that Adam will share with you that's got a video, uh, the three big questions about autism. So there's lots of resources out there. Thank you. And speaking of big questions, we've one very big question. I think it's something that is certainly as an organization that we're coming um, to terms with all the time and, and trying to support. But we, Una would like to know, my daughter is terrified of face coverings. Any tips to help her? So I'm gonna throw that out to the panel if anyone would like to comment. Um, or Jennifer, if there's anything you'd like to say on it. Could I ask a question back? So is it a sensory issue? I'm curious about the daughter's age. I'm curious about um, if there was particularly maybe an incident that mm -hmm. led this be being particularly traumatic. There's just a lot of follow-up questions because obviously if it's a sensory thing, um, there are ways to, to work towards that, but I'm just not sure of a, a little bit more. She's 17. Okay, same age as my daughter. Is it primarily a sensory thing or do you think that she perhaps associates it with danger? Related to us, oh honey. My daughter was a make-a-wish child when she was little. Um, and we, I, just, I wrote all about this, not just in heels. I understand that completely. Uh, I would invite you perhaps uh, to 
go to, if, if it's okay with that, just because I want to be able to answer things that are broad to everyone. This obviously sounds like this young woman has been through things before. So I would say some of the things you can use are those five, four, three, two, one techniques, teaching her why that's important. And then um, you want to, through my website, I'd be happy to address because that is a really specific thing that I was on the board of the Children's Hospital for a while. So I'd be happy to talk about that. And just as well, if I if I, I might just pick up on that point, we are receiving a lot of correspondence on that issue. Uh, you can feel free to get in touch with us on info at asiam.ie. We have some social stories addressing the issue. I also would definitely recommend just looking up on YouTube, Peter Vermoulin, who people might be familiar with, who, who a lot about context blindness, has done a really good, simple video explaining why it can be challenging and some strategies that would be helpful. And in addition, I'm uh, conscious that there may be some people listening who, from a sensory perspective, have challenges with face coverings. Obviously, there are exemptions in place in relation to that, and you can get more information in that regard um, on the As I Am website. Um, Yvonne uh, Jennifer would just like, says that it was a fantastic presentation, and she just asked you um, to remind us the name of your book in case anyone wants to, I suppose, learn more. Sure. So there are seven of them. Um, but if, um, if she goes to um, jenniferotoolauthor.com, um, there's a books section and you can actually get free excerpts from all of them. The most recent one was Autism in Heels, um, but you can get free excerpts from all of them. Um, I know I mentioned the Secret Book of Social Rules in there as well. So, but you can get free excerpts from all of them and they're all available on Amazon and, you know, wherever, wherever you find books, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. And there's just, there's a lot of effusive praise um, coming in as well. Um, Deirdre from our Castle Bar Town Autism Friendly Committee, um, they're just starting the journey and they think there's a lot of ideas tonight they can take back to their committee. Um, and of course, you know, we're delighted that what we're doing here in Clonakilty is now being replicated in towns like Castle Bar, Listowel, Tralee, um, Skerries, Bray, um, I probably will get in trouble if I start naming them all, uh, but that is certainly a good cross section of them. Um, so, I mean, it's uh, th th there's, I think, eight communities across the country who are, who are following suit. Um, so I think um, what we're doing here in Clannacilty is continuing to inspire people um, across the country. Um, and also a lot of people that are just saying that, you know, they have young children on the autism spectrum um, and that th th there's been a lot tonight that they can take away and put in practice in their work lives, in their home lives. Um, and in their lives in the community. So I just want to thank you hugely for, for joining us this evening and, and sharing your expertise. Um, I really, really appreciate it. Um, and I'm, I'm paying back for it tomorrow because I'm doing something similar for you tomorrow. So I don't feel too guilty. As <laughs> that's right, that's right, that's right. I'm grateful. We have master classes over at Belong and Adam is one of our masters. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I know there's, there's some people speaking about how they're looking forward to looking up for your Belong initiative and how they can get involved in that as well. Um, and okay. just the very final thing that I, I, I think would just be worthwhile saying is I was delighted to hear from the Clannock Hilty Autism Friendly Town Committee recently that I think there's about 120 members um, are autism champions within Clannock Hilty now. So everybody from public services to sporting organizations to other retailers. I'm conscious there may be some people listening. Maybe they are, they'd be interested in volunteering. I know there's some really interesting projects the committee is doing. Or maybe there's businesses or clubs that would like to get involved and get behind the initiative. Um, maybe just if someone on the panel could let me know what people could do if they'd like to get more involved or learn more about the project. We have um, an Autism Friendly Facebook page, so Autism Friendly Clannacilty. Um, and if people would contact us through the Facebook page, um, the face behind a lot of the Facebook page is Elaine. Um, and she's great at um, routing all the queries through. Um, so we have a great um, dynamic committee. The big challenge this year is re in a town that has them um, trying to overcome certain closures for a few weeks and different periods of lockdown and opening up. Um, we decided that our focus is, is a little bit of a reset um, coming back to some good principles um, very timely with this of how to nav navigate COVID-19 um, in the town of Clannacilty for the autism community. So I think this is very relevant today, but that will be the focus and re-energize our members back into juggling both um, and helping our, our community to, to have um, a pleasanter uh, experience as they work and live in Clannacilty. 
That's fantastic. Just as a, a very final takeaway from people who feel re-energized tonight and, and want to access more information, if you go to the As I Am YouTube channel, um, we produce with Super Value two support webinars every single month. And obviously it, throughout 2020, there's been a real focus on COVID-19. So there is a bank of information there that you can access. And also if you go to supervalue.ie, we produced a lot of materials together during the first lockdown, really to support people around topics like how you can leverage your special interests uh, at this time, and um, how you can make sure that your home is sensory friendly, and top tips, I suppose, for everybody in the community around how we can be a, a little bit more kind, more patient and more clear. And I think if we did those three things, um, we'd go a long way to being more inclusive of everybody. So. I want to thank everybody for giving up um, their time this evening and coming together on this important topic. I particularly wanted to say thank you to Jennifer, um, who who definitely drew the short straw and not getting an actual invitation to Planet Kilty because <laughs> down I the know, dang it. <laughs> um, in a truly autism friendly way, it's just about to turn a uh, quarter to nine. So we're going to finish on time, uh, which is a positive thing. And um, so I want to thank everybody and um, Please stay in touch with us and we look forward to working with you as we enter into the third year of this journey together. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jennifer. Thanks, Adam. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.